save. Ah, there we go. And finally, I'm working. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Hire a professional, he said. He's a great audio engineer, he said. Yes, okay. Yes, okay. <laughs> Live stream and software, it'll be the death of me, honestly. Hello, everyone. Welcome to ADSR. I'm honestly a professional at this. You may have thought otherwise, but I assure you, I really, really am. My name's Paul Nolan, and I am here on this stream to let you have a little look at the brand new version of Hexel, ADSR's amazing MIDI sequencer, music theory extravaganza, extraordinaire plugin that I've been having a whale of a time with recently. And it's been updated to version 1.1. And that means a whole host of new features, which we're going to get into. So the chat's obviously, you know, pinging already. Feel free to drop questions in. We'll do that towards the end. I've got a nice little ditty for you, shall we say, a little song that we are going to break down and look at how all of the patterns and ideas from this track is actually being made in Hexel. And I'm sure you're going to like what you're going to see. Just so you know, quickly before we get going, this week is ADSR's Easter Sale and they're celebrating with a week of exclusive sound and software bundles, uh, including today's offer, which includes the new and improved, as we've just said, the Hexel 1.1, plus brand new expansion packs, which are Dance and EDM, and the te Techno Code expansion pack for just $24.99, which basically doubles your preset library within Hexel. And trust me, you want them, because we're going to go through some of the stuff in the packs, and it will work wonderfully. So without much further ado and any further mic problems or hopeful technical issues, we will dive straight in to Ableton, and we'll see exactly what we have here. So what we've got is, again, a bit of a melodic techno track, as you know, I'm well known for. If you've seen any of the other streams on ADSR, again, if you don't know who I am, I'm a professional, but just not with microphones, clearly at the moment, uh, a professional music producer, sound designer, composer, have worked in the past with DJs like Sasha, artists like Junkie XL, many, many more. Won't bore you with that, but I am known for mostly progressive house, melodic house and techno, film music, ambient stuff, all that kind of good stuff. So I thought we'd put something together in the wonderful Hexel and with a few other synths that I really, really love. And here's how it sounds. <laughs> So yeah, just a lovely floaty kind of expressive melodic house and techno kind of vibe there. And you can see there are not one, but two instances of Hexel. And we'll go through the workflow, how to connect it and everything else, how to get that going. And I'm using two of my favorite synths in the form of Artoria Pigments, which is just my absolute go-to and also Yuhi Repro 1, which I'm a massive fan of as well. So as you can see, very, very minimal processing there because I'm still at this ideas stage and just exploring compositional elements and ideas. The drums come from ADSR's very own drum machine, which I am a fan of. I've got to say, I'm, an, I'm a massive fan of this. There's some incredible sounds, some brilliant sequences and fantastic features. And I did a stream on this recently on the ADSR YouTube channel. So just, you know, take a look through that if you're interested. We may have some more stuff going on with this a little bit later in April, but I couldn't possibly comment. And I just put this nice basic sequence together from a variety of different kits just to give us a bit of a basis on how it fits rhythmically with 
the melodic and kind of harmonic ideas. And really, harmonic and melodic ideas are, you know, very much at the heart of this update in Hexel 1.1 because you can actually do chords now as well as the usual melodic sort of arpeggio type stuff that it is absolutely fantastic for. So what I'll do is I will break down these two sounds and again, a couple of these sounds have actually in sequences have come from the packs that are part of the Easter sale. So first of all, what we'll do is, is that we'll bring up the melodic part, which is this RP sort of plucky lead. And we'll be able to look at various different options here for Hexel. And basically what we can see here is there are obviously various notes being played in various positions. And also as well, a couple of these really interesting symbols at various points. So what we'll do is we'll solo the ARP pluck area here. And we'll investigate a little bit more sound design and stuff like that a little bit later once we've got the sound down. And let's just look at this sound in isolation and look at how it triggers. So you can see there's there's quite a lot of, you know, signifiers and notes flying around quite a bit. And to break it down, what's really great is you can see you know, it, it works on this hexagonal kind of cell kind of thing. And if you're, you know, an old person like me, like a mid-40s boomer, basically, it will remind you of an old game show in the UK that we had called Blockbusters. It very much reminded me of that very, you know, very instantly, basically. So, you know, again, if you're old, middle-aged like me and from the UK, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Otherwise, that little joke is going to go completely over your heads. However, just to go into the actual functionality of the plugin here, what you have are emitters. Now, these two purple, or should I say orange notes here, are basically emitters, and you can see the triggers that emanate out in all directions from this emitter. And what's quite cool about them is you can decide which direction these emitters actually emit notes from or triggers for notes and again obviously as it's moving through and in this case it's 16th notes and at a speed of 16th notes as well so it's kind of like doing a sort of a more arpeggiated thing it will move through various different steps and you can play different notes at those steps so here it's playing an f through to a c sharp and then it will hit this other symbol here on this cell here which is a reverse which means it will send the trigger that's been emitted in this direction back where it came from that's why there's that lovely cyclical kind of vibe to it there's another emitter here that hits another c just at the right moment as well in each sequence and as you can see the sequence length is literally set to one bar so let's play it again and then we'll start to play around with a couple of different options and then we'll go through some of the new options in Hexel 1.1. So again, just do this for the benefit of people who may not have seen Hexel before and know exactly what they're, you know, they're, they're looking at here. Now, what you've seen me do there is actually shut off by clicking on the sides here, these black borders, if you will, actually decide where the notes emanate from in what direction. So even though the sequence hasn't changed, I've simplified the look of where the triggers are traveling and where the sequences are flowing backwards and forwards. So it's quite a nice way of just, as I say, simplifying things. So this is literally a sequence from one of the packs that is involved in the Easter Sale at ADSR. And it's it's a really, really great pack. There's two of them, as I say. The, there's the EDM kit, which, again, you know, even if you're not into EDM music and you know, you're into that big room sound, there is amazing stuff in there that can be adapted to whatever genre you want to make. So it does work in a beautiful, beautiful way. So, again, you'll see how these sequences kind of can be adapted into a melodic techno production here. 
And again, we've got uh, not only reverse, you've got redirect. And obviously, if you select MIDI note here, you can add more notes to the sequence. So what we could actually do is add another little A in there, see exactly how that sounds. Not great. <laughs> The F works really nicely. We try to see that C sharp. get the layout as well you know trying some notes seeing what happens and effectively you can see as it goes further and further up the to the top of the plugin window here you've actually got quite you know higher notes up here and then obviously it goes more into the bass range down the bottom here so again what we can actually do is then maybe add in one or two other little directions here and again, we're getting a bit of a feeling of like Fs and C sharps work quite well. So what we can actually do is add in another C sharp and have it move in this direction to see what kind of effect it has. Adds more of a bass nose, reasonably okay. Again, that F kind of works quite nicely on that lower angle there. And what we can also do as well is add in, as we say, a redirect. So what we could also do here is add one in here. And again, it will take this trigger as it moves up, hits the C note here, and then redirects out in one of any direction that we would like here. And there's some interesting stuff that can happen where, let's say, for example, we could actually have it redirect in the same way as a reverse where it moves back down. Or what we could do is actually have it redirect up to the reverse and have it move back down here. And we could actually play another F MIDI note there just to see exactly what would happen. So again, you can almost plot a bit of a path here, which is quite a cool thing. So let's have a little listen to that. So as you can see, sometimes it holds on to the note, sometimes it redirects it in one direction, redirects it in another. It's a great way of adding a, a huge amount of variation, a little bit of randomness into you know, what would be in a regular piano roll type situation. Something quite static that would actually just repeat over and over again. So there's just a different type of interactivity here. And again, the, setting up this basic sequence is quite cool but we can also work in a slightly different way where we can, and this is one of the newer features in 1.1, is that we can add swing, which would be quite useful for us to add in a click, or maybe what we can do is add in our ADSR drum machine here, and we can go to the sequencer, and we can go to D1, and we can just solo that, and you'll be able to hear that with everything plain so you can kind of get an idea of the swing. And what's great is every time I hit play, I've got no idea what it's going to do and it's going to cycle through different variations of it at different times and really add 
a lovely kind of liveness, humanity, a bit of a performed quality to it, which, again, you could lay these notes out almost verbatim on a piano roll and just get the same thing every time. And speaking of being able to lay things out on a piano roll, one of the things that I think is one of the best options in Hexel 1.1 is the fact that now in the top corner we have this you know, compass icon, if you would like to say it, and we can literally take this sequence and drag and drop it in to a MIDI clip. So if you were curious as to what this sequence would look like in MIDI, well, there you go. So from here, you could take it a number of different directions. You could add your swing templates from the groove pool in Ableton. You could add in extra notes. You could, of course, fold here and then add extra notes and take stuff out and re-edit the sequence and, you know, go into some pretty interesting ideas around, let's say, for example, at the end of, you know, bar two here, we could actually take these notes and then invert them or we could reverse them and add even more variation because Ableton's got some amazing tools for that. And you can randomize things like your velocity as well, which is quite a useful thing. So again, you can obviously, you know, wrangle this melodic line into whatever form you like and be able to really play with it. And again, you can see there's some overlapping notes here by the way that I've edited this sequence. So we could actually take some of these F1s that are triggering at the same time and actually add them in in a different way. So we could actually pull these out to a bit of a space. So they've got a, a bit of a voice of their own, shall we say, and then be able to you know, play around with them. So one of the things we can do now is obviously take the monitor out of in to auto or to off, and it will just play when I play the clip here, it will play the contents of the clip. So just to a bit give you a bit of an idea as to how I've rooted this, you've got the MIDI channel here with Hexel on, and then the instrument channel with Repro 1, which is one of my favorite synths. And I've got a pitch control here in from the MIDI tool. So I'm actually triggering the synth one octave down from what I would normally do within Hexel. And of course, you can transpose things like you can see here. Again, it's already transposed down five semitones. And you can transpose everything down up to one octave minus 12 semitones or plus 12 semitones in Hexel. And if you need to take it the rest of the way, if you want to go down a couple of octaves or up a couple of octaves, you can really do that with the pitch MIDI uh, tool here in Ableton Live. So that's quite cool. And again, I've just got a, a, a ducker here to just do some side chaining. But then to receive the MIDI, you have to click MIDI from, ARP pluck, as I've called the channel. And then within here, you've got pre-effects, post-effects, or Hexel. So you select Hexel, and to get back to Hexel triggering Repro 1 in this case, you click Monitor In. Now, if I turn that off, that means the ARP pluck will not trigger. So this Hexel will not trigger, but I can then play the actual MIDI clip. So let's do that. And we found the space for those extra notes. So again, Hexel has gotten us into the ballpark here. And now we can drag and drop straight into the session view or even the arrangement view, if you prefer to work that way, and then get into the piano roll level and use the best of both worlds, which is really, really seriously cool. And again, you can add things like groove. You know, I really like some of the logic grooves because I tend to swing quite violently, what a word to say, between Ableton, Logic, Cubase, etc. 
because I work across the electronic and film world and I have to use various different DAWs. Of course, Hexel is great across all of them. And ultimately, you know, you've got these swing templates here in Logic. So again, I like swing Logic 16ths, 54%, which you can hear a little click there. Maybe not through my mic because I don't think it plays through here on the live stream. But you'll get the idea when I commit that you get that little bit of a nudge and it means you get a bit more swing and a bit more syncopation like this. If I let the drums out. We've got the great basis of something here. So again, we've edited one of these presets and it's working really, really quite nicely. So again, one of the things that I really, really like about Hexel 1.1 is the fact that you can do these kinds of arpeggiated sequences. And I can actually then just save this and I can save it in my user presets here. So I could call that PN because they're, they're my initials. And I can call that Pragmatic because that's the name of the preset. And we can call it ADSR. There you go. So I can go back to that at any stage. So again, what would be quite nice actually is to go through a few of these now. And we can do that just by clicking on the little icon here. And you can see we've got our two new packs here. We've got Techno Code and we've also got Dancing EDM. So we can play around with these a little bit to see exactly what we've got here. Not only do we have more traditional kind of arpeggios, you've got leads, you've got plucks, you've got bass sequences, you've got, again, more full-on melodic sequences, you've got some bonus presets, and again, the techno code also contains a drum machine bonus kit as well which means if you do own drum machine then you can obviously use this kit as well and as you can hear the kits sound great so why wouldn't you so let's have a little look at some bass sequences because this is actually something i've not fiddled around with yet so let's let's learn together in real time shall we say as I had to say when I used to work for Apple and I had to be dead cheesy about it in an Apple store back in the day anyway enough about my personal hell let's get into this so we can then cycle through the presets and we can have a little listen and see what works. So that's playing the MIDI clip still. We'll put the monitor back in. Make sure that clip's off. And we're still minus 12 here. I mean, that's just instantly great. And again, being able to transpose it means that you can actually just put it into whatever key you like and is, is really, really powerful. And again, we could change the note length. So we could actually change it to, to an eighth note. bit more of a stomper there at the eighth note. So again, the same sequence can be really quite dramatically changed. And again, we could go from this eighth note, maybe we go back to a 16th and we can actually play around with it a little bit more. So what we could do is actually transpose things rather than the 10. We could go to like say minus three. And as you can see, the grid changes along with the transposition. So we can find some transpositions that work quite nicely. <laughs> See, I like the minus five because, again, five semitones interval is the difference between what you would call a perfect fourth. And, again, it was at minus 10. If we put that to minus three where it was originally, when we first moved it, it's then what you would call a perfect fifth upwards. 
So it's you know it's 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 so great to be able to just take that same sequence and just instantly put it into a different key. Super powerful for when, say, for example, if we put it back to minus ten, what you can actually see is that the lowest note here is this low E, and it's all just E and E and an F. So what's great about this is the fact that I could then say, right, well, actually, I'm working in D. So, right, okay, let's drag that down. Right down to the octave. Okay, well, now it's in D. So you can very easily harmonize the sequence to whatever you want. And then when you're ready, you can drag in the MIDI clip. And again, you can click the little three dots here next to the little drag icon that we used before. And we can decide how long the export length is. So we can actually go all the way up to 16 bars if we want to. And then we can drag that in. And as you can see, that's just given me a 16 bar clip ready for me to edit and put some little flares in and little bits of variation and essentially just customize it into oblivion. Me, myself, I actually quite like to work in eight bar chunks because it works out to relatively about 15 seconds of a track's running time. And then I like to try and almost slice the track for arrangements into these eight bar scenes, if you will, which just makes things much more organized, much easier to work with. And just, again, really, really quite something to, you know, to behold. And just that, with that if that's one thing you take from tonight, apart from Hexel, that will supercharge your workflow if you struggle with arrangements. So from here, we've got lots of other new features within Hexel as well. So one of the things that we can do is actually turn auto MIDI on. Now, what auto MIDI does is that it turns these emitter notes here, which you may have noticed up to now if you're, you're really paying attention, and I hope that you are, they actually don't emit notes. They act as triggers. So again, in this emitter's case here at the bottom, in the center, it's serving to trigger the D note beneath it and basically have it bounce, bounce back, basically through that reverse. So what would happen if all of these emitters actually emitted notes? So what you'll see now is that you've got a G sharp, you've got some C sharps, you've got a couple of A's. Let's see how it sounds. It might sound great. It might sound terrible. Let's see what happens. Not bad. So what would be great about that is being able to take a version of that that is just your basic there and then be able to put the auto MIDI on and then drag that again and then you'll see you've got all of these different bits of variation. Now you can see there's quite a few notes that are happening at the same time here. It's probably like four notes happening all at once. However, you know, once you play it through and again you can find some gaps for these notes that could work quite nicely. You know, just for, you know, the beginning of it, essentially, you could actually do something quite cool where you could actually, you know, do a little bit of a ramp up. You could do slight variations every time. You've just got so much of, a, of an option because, again, you've heard from the original sequence that it will really, really work. So, again, using Hexel as a way of quickly getting some inspiration here in a preset and then being able to completely play around with it is very, very powerful indeed. What it's also powerful for now in version 1.1 is actually the fact that it can also do chords, which is quite an interesting thing. So we're going to move on and have a little bit of a look at this, but then what we'll do to sort of close off is we'll explore all the different options and really take this idea to the next level by looking at, you know, a little bit of sound design with Repro One and Pigments, as well as, you know, the the Hexel triggers and, you know, how we can kind of get things speaking and automating and moving in and out. Because again, it all kind of flows together. So chords, again, another Hexel. And what I'll actually do here, just to go back to our ARP pluck, and again, if you are an Ableton user, one of the things I've found really, really, really useful 
is the fact that I actually have multiple plugin windows open. Again, just a very slight Ableton Power tip where if you go to the plugins window, make sure that multiple plugin windows are set to on because what I can do now is I can go back to this, go to user presets, add this back in. And what you'll notice is that the two instances of Hexel here, the pluck that we worked on earlier and the chords now have very similar notes. But what you'll notice on the right hand side here is that we have a cell with C minor, C sharp major, and an F sus4, which stands for sustain4. Now, what's great about this is being able to compare and contrast and essentially make sure that the sequence that you are creating in the newer instance of Hexel can work and harmonize with the one that you have already going on a more melodic side. In music composition, we have two main techniques of composing new musical ideas. We have melodic, which is what we've just done with the ARP pluck here, and there's also harmonic, which is to do with chord progressions and everything else. So, you know, it's quite a nice thing to kind of look at. So again, what you'll see here is that there's a lot of shared notes between the two here, and that's been very much by design. And I've created this from scratch. Again, very, very basic. I've got the auto MIDI on, so it starts by playing an F minor. And then obviously as it moves through the steps, it will play a C minor, a C sharp major, and an F sus four. And again, don't be worried if you don't understand what these things tend to mean. You know, uh, it, it's a very, very simple thing where there's just slightly different colors of notes. And again, this is the other thing I'd really highly recommend Hexel for is the ability for you to actually learn some music theory alongside your compositions. So you'll start to see with this different interaction rather than just looking at plain notes on a piano roll, whatever your DAW is, whether it's Ableton, Logic, FL, whatever it is you're using, you're starting to see the associations between notes, chords, scales, things like that as well. Really, really powerful stuff. So from here, if I were to play the pad section, which is again, a basic preset within Artoria Pigments. And there you go. And you'll notice the movements of Hexel in terms of its triggers is very, very different. Now, if we compare the two here, what we've got is speed is one bar. So that means we only trigger a group of cells once every four beats, once every bar. So we get that lovely, almost like four bar chord progression, starting with an F minor. Again, it can start in the F minor because we've got the auto MIDI on. So the emitter will actually create the chord. But how do we set this to the chord mode? It's actually quite simple. Let's say, for example, I just take out of the C here, and that means now that note will no longer play. If I want to then trigger that note again, or maybe any other note in our grid here, I can click on the C. And then what I'm going to do is, is either control click or right click on the actual cell itself. And you can see we've got various different chord options. So we've got things like major, minor, major with a seventh, minor with a seventh, with a sixth added on, with a major nine, again, minor nine, dominant seventh, and then more sort of interesting stuff like the sustain four or the sus four, like we're using on this F over here, and augmented and diminished chords. So again, don't worry too much if you don't understand what these things mean. You can actually play around with them and hear what they sound like. Really, what music theory is, is just a shorthand for understanding how different notes sound together and how they play together. That's all it is, really. It's like code, essentially. It's like MIDI. It's just that you work in MIDI rather than, you know, like, say, for example, you know, Mozart or John Williams used to on pizza, you know, pieces of like notation and sheet paper, basically sheet music paper. So ultimately, play around with it see what kind of vibe 
works well. For melodic techno, as you can see, it's the vast majority of the time, it's minor. It's minor keys. So we'll actually right-click, put that in a minor, and then go from there. So again, what we'll be able to do now is just listen to the two sequences, hear them play together, and then be able to appreciate how I've programmed them to actually work together. So one underpins the other. So again, the harmonics of the pads are underpinning the more melodic arpeggio-based pluck, which is kind of cycling through its variations, but is being made more emotional by the pads that are running that four solid chord kind of, you know, progression underneath. So again, very, very simple to be able to set this up. You just right-click on the cell and... and create a chord of your choice and what's quite interesting here is i played around for quite some time with this combination of the c sharp major and the f sus4 because what i really wanted is that feeling of it's going up but it feels like it wants to go back to that root note it wants to go home that's a great you know signifier of a good chord progression and these are things that as you learn a little bit more about music theory again hexel is a great place to start you can actually start to appreciate how these great chord progressions and great melodic sequences are actually written by the incredibly talented artists that we have in electronic music these days and also across other genres as well so again we can take advantage now of the midi drag where we can drag straight into pigments and we can actually see in the more traditional midi view what this translates into so again very nice solid chords works really nicely and again you can start to pick apart what these chords actually are you know you can see the f minor again f with a g sharp and a c4 so again this is what i mean about actually really starting to get under the hood of music theory if you've found it a little bit intimidating in the past you can start to program in different chords drag them into the piano roll here in ableton or whatever your daw is and actually investigate what they actually look like in the more traditional piano role and you can start to add that to your musical vocabulary you start to recognize understand both visually and audibly what these chords are meant to look like you know written down in the piano role and also what they're supposed to sound like as well and you'd be amazed how quickly you start to build up a recognition you know people talk about having perfect pitch and stuff like that but really what it is is just practice most people don't have that i certainly don't i suck at playing the piano and playing that guitar on the wall quite frankly that thing stays on the wall more than it's played but ultimately i do have a, a good understanding of music theory when it comes to composition and that will stand you in good stead i would go as far as to say okay yes in electronic music Music theory is probably not an absolute essential. However, it's really, really important to have some music theory knowledge. And in fact, a little music theory knowledge goes a hell of a long way. So it works really, really beautifully. And you can start to get much more expressive with stuff. And just to kind of extrapolate on that as well, to have the ability to actually extrapolate from the pads. So effectively, what we've done is created the melodic section first then we've created the chord progression to underpin that and then actually what we really need is some bass so what we can do here is we can reach in i can just make a midi track here and i'm going to reach for one of my favorite bass synths and the synth i'm going to reach for is in reactor 6 um the the one that i've just 
have had the best time with recently. And I'm going to be completely honest with you. I have actually sold hardware based synths because of this plugin, because I can get better sounds out of Monarch than I can from, you know, maybe even like the Behringer Model D, quite frankly. And this thing is one of the fattest synths I have ever used in any capacity, be it software or, you know, hardware. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to extrapolate, as I say, this core progression. I'm going to drag this clip that we've originally dragged from Hexel out into Reactor 6. And what I'm going to do is actually take the bottom note of each chord. So again, if we fold that down so you can see them, I'm just going to take the bottom note of each chord of these three. And effectively, that is our chord progression. From here, I'm going to just dial in like a kind of an easy sort of respace, if you will. And um, the way that I do that and the way that you can create a really lovely respace is by just offsetting the oscillators just the touch and then obviously having the filter at the right moment. So let's have a little listen to that. <laughs> And you can hear the way that the oscillators are kind of chiming against each other. Now, that's a little bit on the high side because it's coming at F3. So, again, I can just take this, shift down a couple. Maybe go down to F1. There you go. And again, because it is the root note of these chords that we created in Hexel, we can be fully confident that it's going to work. We can then extrapolate on that further. We could actually, at the end of an eight bar, we could actually have that high and then we could go down. So we've got two notes at F1 there, so we can kind of give you that variation. So let's have a listen to that. that will work perfectly as well. amazing on the face of it when you first open hexel you might be forgiven for thinking that all you could do with it is like kind of fairly rapid arp sequences or melodic stuff and you know it's got to follow a certain sort of trajectory with the way the notes are spread across the grid and actually now with the updates especially you know nothing further could be from the truth because i can now get really emotional beautiful harmonic chord progressions that then again fold down into really you know great sound and bass progressions as well that match what's going on with the pads but happen in a couple of octaves down in a different register with a different instrument and again i can play what is called a little bit of counterpoint with hexel because again what would happen normally here is that we would get this F2 at the end of every sequence. 
But what's really useful, and again, this is a real pro tip for you melodic house and techno producers, that if you want to create more emotion, when you've got a chord progression following a pad or following something melodic, the great way to use counterpoint is to actually, again, the reason why it's called counterpoint is because as one sequence or one instrument moves up, another one moves down, and it can create so much drama, emotion, and you know, real real sense of like wow in your tracks as well. So again, what's going on here is as the pad goes up from C sharp two to F or so should I say C sharp three, I think it is, to F four, what we've actually got is the bass going from C sharp two down to C sharp or down to F one, I should say. So you've got that kind of like as one goes up, the other one goes down. It creates a greater gap in the melodics and in the notes. And it really, really does work quite well indeed. And again, just to kind of give you an understanding of what it actually looks like here, if we were to just give this a slightly different color and we can do that together. And if we can move those apart. So as you can see, as we get F4, A sharp four, C5, we've actually got a downward movement in the bass. So you can see there's a bigger gap here. Whereas later on where it follows, you've got a smaller gap and it's another variation and it follows really, really nicely. So not only have you had some you know, tips for using Hexel tonight, we've actually busted open some quite interesting music theory terminology on tonight's stream, which is really, really nice indeed. So again, just to kind of recap, you know, you've got all of these great new features. You've got the fact that you can you know, have the emitters create their own MIDI. And again, we can just drop that on F minor, C minor. It was C sharp major here and then an F sus four. And again, this is another preset that I would like to, you know, save PN harmonic emotional 001, for example. And again, that's going to be recallable at any one time. Again, you can transpose this into you know, almost any other note to see how it works. You've got the ability to slow the speed down, be able to play more block chords like you can see on screen at the moment. And obviously you've got the major, major advantage, which I think is just the, the best feature about Hexel 1.1 is this MIDI drag. It's absolutely a game changer and really, really nice to be able to do that and then further edit and refine and everything else. Again, of course, we also looked at swing as well because, again, we programmed in a little bit of swing here, about 5%. Really, really great. And again, we added a lot of variation with the redirects and everything else that we managed to conjure up. And again, obviously, we've got some amazing presets here from the Techno Code and from the EDM library as well, which, you know, we've dug through a few presets. So yeah, we've, even though this is a very, very basic idea, we've actually dug through some really, really nice ideas here tonight. And hopefully that will work quite well for you. All right. So I'm going to just take a little bit of a look through the comments and hopefully we're going to see what's going on. And there we go. Okay. Um, blah, 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 blah. Great. Okay. Good. Well, at least everything's working well. Um, T80, TI80 Mark. Good to see you, mate. That's really cool that you can export it to MIDI. That way you could make tweaks to the output of MIDI to add more variation to it. Absolutely. Really, really cool. So that's not bad at all. Again, uh, TI Mark. Uh, it says very cool. I might have to snag this bundle. Need to take off now. Good to hang out. Thank you very much, mate. Excellent. Todd Bradshaw, thanks for the recent update to Hexel. I love working with it. So this was a nice surprise today. Much appreciated. Excellent stuff, mate. And hopefully you will enjoy Hexel 1.1. And I know I'm going to for sure. And again, this is just one application of it. You know, I'm actually just, you know, working on a melodic house and techno thing here. And I know that a lot of you are, you know, really, you know, electronic producers in various different fields. And, you know, I'll be using this in film scoring work, quite frankly. 
uh, which is something I'm doing more and more work in these days, things for film trailers, things for TV and adverts and stuff that you really need to come up with like great original melodies for. And this is going to be a major tool for me using, you know, things like Spitfire, you know, orchestral libraries and stuff in contact and, you know, all those big sort of Hollywood strings kind of thing. So really, really cool. So excellent stuff. Glad that Jai came over to YouTube and got with the rest of the guys. And, you know, you're not feeling so lonely now. That's cool. And uh, thanks to Jeremy and everybody else who is uh, watching on the stream at the moment. So like I mentioned before, it is a great a great plugin. You know, there's an amazing sale that's going on at the moment. And it's really, really worth your while getting hold of for sure. 110%. So... While you're here, I'm going to do that YouTube thing towards the end. If you like what you saw here today, apart from the first couple of minutes when my microphone didn't work, please consider subscribing to the channel because it makes a massive difference. And obviously, the more of you that we get to hang out with on a regular basis on these streams, the better, basically. And obviously, you know, there's always great offers, great sales, things like that as well. So it's worth subscribing and then hitting the little notification bell as well to let you know when we're going live next. I'm going to be here quite a bit in April, so I'm told. I just get wheeled out for these things and then get put back in my cupboard, basically. So, you know, it's good to be out in the real world, shall we say. So thank you very much to everyone for this lovely stream. I've really enjoyed myself once again. It's always great to be at ADSR Towers. My name's Paul Nolan, and as I say, I'm a producer, I'm a composer, look my work up. And I also run my own community called MYT, which is you know, really, really exciting. We're starting a record label later on in the year. So again, we're you know absolutely flying in that department and excellent stuff. Thank you to the guys at ADSR for having me. Always great to work with you guys. It's been absolutely wonderful taking up space on your YouTube channel, not just today, but everywhere else as well. And I'm looking forward to doing a lot more in the future. So thank you very much. Enjoy your Easter weekend or enjoy your long weekend, whatever it is in whatever part of the world you're in. It's a well-deserved break for most of us. And I am off to Wales to go and finish recording an album for a week. So it's going to be great. So, oh, Jai's just asked a very, very quick last minute question. Can we play chords and melody in the same instance? Yes, you can. That's a great question. Thankfully, you got that in right at the end before I was about to go. So yes, you can. You can actually set up different emitters, one doing something melodic and another one doing something more chord-based. So actually, you could quite easily, in a certain context, be able to you know run a chord progression and run something else more melodic, like an ARP, for example, in a completely different area of the same instance of a hexel so have a little play around with that that's actually given me an idea that's great i just separated it because i was using different synths for each one and it's a bit easier to do it that way you know and, and have separate triggers for each thing so great idea thank you very much really glad you jumped over from twitch because that was the one of the best questions we've had all stream and yes like i say we're gonna take it easy from now on and we're gonna let you guys get on with your lovely long weekends hopefully the sun is shining wherever you are and again been an absolute pleasure and i'll see you guys soon much love see you later